Today I'm going to show you how to build this garden planter. It's cheap, simple, effective, and strong. If you want to see how I did it, watch the video. Any project should start with you acclimating your wood to your shop. This is never more important than with pressure treated wood that comes wet. For one planter, we're going to cut four pieces down to 18 and a half inches. Don't worry, I've included a cut list at the end of the video that you can copy down if you want to make the exact same size planter as me. Each of these pieces are going to be used to make an individual leg. If you rip them down to about three inches, you can then put the two pieces together into an L shape and have an equal dimension on both sides. The downside to this with pressure treated lumber is that you'll see that cut line and have to stain it to make it blend in. We're going to go a little fancier and rip our boards down directly in half so that we can then miter the long edge. This has two benefits. One, it's going to look better because you don't have that cut edge that you have to deal with. And two, you'll get a grain wrap effect around the leg. Not that anyone else is going to notice except you. I've decided to rip all my pieces in half because it's going to make it a little easier to miter them cleanly when the time comes. I've tilted my blade to 45 degrees and I'm going to run each piece through. Be sure to maintain your factory edge against the fence, as well as maintain the orientation of the board so that the same face is always up. If you keep the same face up, you're going to get that grain match we talked about earlier. You can see here the joint lined up pretty good, and now it's time to glue the legs together. I would suggest using something waterproof like Type-On 3 for this application if your planter is going to be outdoors. Along with the glue, we're going to use a few brad nails to clamp it together until everything's dry. I'm using one and one quarter inch brads and I'm putting them in a crisscross pattern along the miter to lock in both sides. Three on each side is enough for this application and it'll keep the joint nice and tight. Watch the angle of your gun so that you don't blow a nail out the face of your board or put a nail through your finger. Both those options suck. Once you have everything nailed together, grab a damp cloth and clean away your squeeze out. It's gonna make your life easier later on. With four legs glued and nailed together, it's time to cut pieces down for the sides. You're going to need 12 pieces at 18 inches. More important than getting them exactly 18 inches is getting them all exactly the same. If you're able to use a stop lock, use one. Some of the ease of this planner is the fact that it's a square. Take four of your boards and put a pocket screw in the top. This is how we're going to attach the mitered frame to the top of the planter. If you don't have a Craig jig, you can easily face nail or screw from above. With all of our parts cut, let's start working on some sub-assemblies. Grab one L-shaped leg, one side panel with the pocket hole, and two more side pieces. I'm using some waterproof construction adhesive because it's going to fill any small gaps left behind, and it's going to survive outdoors. Run a bead on your leg, and then bring your slats on top of it, and nail them in. My nails are a hair too long for these panels, so I'm nailing them on an angle so it doesn't blow out the other side. It also adds a little bit of extra strength. Another important tip is to make sure that you do all four of these assemblies in exactly the same way. If your leg is always on the right when you do this glue up, make sure it's always on the right for each panel. Once you have all four panels done, it's time to put them together. Connecting the panels is essentially the same as how we just built each of them. Run a bead of construction adhesive, flush up the tops, toss in a couple nails, and make sure everything's tight. The reason I wanted you to assemble all four panels in the same orientation is so that when we put them together and form our box, the length and width are going to be equal. We're aiming for a planter that's perfectly square for a couple reasons. One, I like how it looks, and two, it's going to make the mitered frame on top just that much easier when all four sides are exactly the same. With that being said, you can obviously modify the dimensions to whatever you want but it is going to make your top picture frame a little more tricky if it's a rectangle instead of a square. Getting this last panel in is a little tricky because you are dealing with two glue surfaces at the same time. As long as you're careful, you won't smear glue everywhere and everything will be just fine. You know what's not tricky? Hitting that subscribe button if you're enjoying this content. And don't forget, I do have the full cut list at the end of this video.
Now that our base is assembled, let's get working on the picture frame that's going to sit on top to trim everything out and make it look finished. I cross cut two pieces to 21 and a half inches. From there, you're going to want to rip each of these pieces down to just under half its width. The idea is to have four pieces that are all exactly the same size, both in length and width. Once you have that done, I head it over to the miter saw where I put a 45 degree miter on one end of each piece. By having a sacrificial fence in the back, it really makes it easy to line up the edge of your board with where that saw kerf is going to be. The other advantage of the sacrificial fence is that it gives me somewhere to clamp a stop to. Since our planter is a square, our picture frame also needs to be a square. And when you're making a mitered picture frame that's a square, all four sides need to be exactly the same if they're going to line up nicely. The stop makes this process repetitive, fast, and accurate. So don't be lazy. If you have the ability to screw a sacrificial board to your miter saw to make a stop, do it. Now I'm going to overkill here a little bit with putting my frame together and I'm going to use some dowels. Mainly because I got this jig a few months ago and I just enjoy using it. In this situation, all I'm doing is lining my jig up with the corner of the miter, drilling holes in the exact same spots every time, and everything should fit together well. Again, this is a perfect place for you to use a Craig or a pocket hole jig, or biscuits, or if you have one, use a domino. Then again, if you have a domino, I'm almost certain you're not watching this video. Now that I'm watching this glue up, I realize just how much faster pocket screws would have been on this frame. So in hindsight, and if I build this thing again, I think I'll probably just pocket hole the bottom. Here comes a part of the build that's probably not really necessary. You could just take your ledger boards that your bottom panel is going to sit on, nail and glue them into your side panels and call it a day. But because I like to do things a little bit overkill, first step is I'm making some spacers out of some scrap blocks. All I'm doing here is basically filling in the couple inches between the ground and the side panels. A dab of glue and a couple nails gets the job done. Now I'm ripping down a few boards that we're going to use as our ledgers. These ledges are what are actually going to hold our floor panels inside our planter. Typically I place these about 10 inches down from the top because you don't need that much dirt in a little garden planter. Once you've determined the elevation of the ledger, take another scrap piece of wood and cut it so it fits between the ledger and the ground. What this allows is that any weight on the floor of your planter is directly sitting on top of your ledger, which is directly sitting on top of these little posts, which is directly sitting on the ground. In this scenario, the person I'm building these planters for wanted maximum dirt depth. So, the posts I've built are essentially the same height as the spaces we made before. You can see here in a sec, once these posts are installed, I'm going to bring the ledger into the planter box and bring it down tight on top of these posts. Put a few nails in, and now the weight is transferred directly through the ledger, through the posts, and onto the ground. Finally, it's time to install our picture framed trim piece on top of the box. Now, if our box is square and our frame is square, it's very simple to line this up. All you have to do is go into each corner and line up the corner of the leg with the seam on the miter joint. If you see here, that corner is lined up, this corner is lined up, the third corner is lined up, and you have to take my word that the fourth corner is lined up. I would still check with a tape measure. But unless your base is completely out of whack, then it should be a pretty even overhang. I use pocket holes to attach it, so I'm going to toss a couple clamps and put these screws in. If you don't have pocket holes, like I said, you can put a couple screws from above directly down. Make sure you use outdoor rated screws, or you can even use a couple brad nails. Finally, cut three boards to fit inside your planner and sit on top of your ledgers. For me, this was 17 and a quarter inches. Once you place these in, they should fit with about a half inch space in between each board. This will allow plenty of space for water to drain. And that's it. Here's our completed planner. Hope you enjoyed. And here's the cut list. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.